Thank you for tuning in to the Black Money Tree Podcast, hosted by entrepreneur, investor, and philanthropist, Jerome D. Love. We are committed to teaching you how to build wealth so that you can build your community. At the Black Money Tree, our goal is to empower wealth creation and create economic self-sufficiency in order to empower generations to come. Society grows great when old men plant trees whose shade they know they shall never enjoy. Season is powered by Wells Fargo Bank. Welcome to the Black Money Tree Podcast. Welcome, welcome, welcome back to the Black Money Tree Podcast. We are now on season three. And here at the Black Money Tree, we do our best to help you build wealth because we think that it's critically important to building our community. Our focus, our podcast centers around two areas, entrepreneurship and real estate investment, because I believe that between those two, that is critically important to building our black community. It's going to take resources to build schools. It's going to take resources to be able to provide the type of quality lifestyle and protection that's necessary for our children. So before I go any further and introduce our guests, I did want to take a moment to thank all of you out there listening that supported Texas Black Expo's 20 year celebration. We had an amazing event. We had Magic Johnson there. There were so many thousands of people there. So I wanna thank you from the bottom of my heart. We've been doing this for a while. I, we are committed to helping to build wealth within the black community. For those that did not attend last year, mark your calendars, May 17th through the 19th, 2024 in Houston. It's going to be an even bigger and better event. And for all those that send me the DMs and have the quick questions that you need about real estate investing, we just launched our whole masterclass series. We call it the Hustle and Flow Real Estate Pro. Um, it's the one hour work month. Go to BeARealEstateInvestor.com. And I have a whole five series uh, production there where it tells you basically how I built my real estate investment uh, empire, if you will, as well as how to find contractors, how to locate the properties. And it's just $10. Now I've sold those courses individually for over three, $400 individually, but I'm offering them all for just $10. So go to be a real estate investor.com. And that said, I'm really excited about today's um, episode. We're going to be talking a little bit about franchising. We're going to be talking about entrepreneurship and we're going to be talking about real estate investment as well. We have a man here, Mr. James Davis. Uh, he has a wealth of, of experience in a variety of areas, uh, but namely Wingstop. I believe he's one of the only African-American Wingstop uh, franchisees. He has his own new brand and line waffles and cream that he's launched. Um, and he has a, a, just a variety of experience that we're going to explore today. So with that said, James Davis, thank you so much for joining us on the black money tree podcast. Thank you, Jerome. It's a pleasure to be here. And, um, I really admire all the aspects that you've brought to the Houston Metroplex and that is commendable in itself. So let's round of applause for her for thank you, know. you thank you thank you thank you so um so yeah that's, that's so let's get into it real quick really quickly tell me like we were talking ahead of time and i didn't even know about the real estate investment let's go down the companies that you own real quick share with them your company and what it is you do so uh i started in real estate uh back in the late 80s early 90s when i uh bought my first house. They call it a starter house. And in buying that house, I paid 38000 for it uh, back in uh, around 91. And I ended up selling it for 78000 mm. So a around thirty five, $40,000 profit, I used that money to buy into a company called Wingstop. Wow. And, um, and what year was that again? That was in about around 91. 91, or so. okay. Right. Okay. And in doing that, I wanted to find a franchise. I wanted to understand what franchising was all about. And lo and behold, I went into Black Enterprise at the time, and I saw this small company out of the Dallas area that was coming along, and uh, Antonio Swad was the franchisor. Okay. And uh, a friend of mine... Um, uh, Golden 
um, uh, I, I, um, his, his name escapes me, but he was selling those franchises. Okay. So I went in, interviewed the guy that was interviewing uh, was it was a military veteran, and interviewed with him. Next thing I know, I was bringing it home to my wife Jennifer, and here it is, twenty two years later, that we've been brand partners with Wingstop and the only, like you said, the only African American uh, brand partners in the Houston Metroplex. So let me ask you this. So my entrepreneurial journey has been a lot different. It, it was, I didn't plan on being an entrepreneur. I just went to college, started realizing that there was no such thing as a good job. And I said, I want to start a business. And I just started trying stuff. Seems like you were a bit more methodical, if you will, than I was. What was it that made you want to purchase a franchise versus starting something on your own? Talk a little bit about that. Well, uh, in starting a franchise, I came to the to to the to the conclusion that either I go in with someone that has a proven concept that has put the work in up front that will provide a eighty percent solution with uh being and and owning your own business and the other the other 20 percent, of course is where you come in to get in there do the work you know push the brand and you know greet the customers and do all of that so you know do i go with an 80 percent solution or i start from ground up as a mom and pop and try to do it all myself so you were, uh, I guess, perceptive enough, even at that point, to really strategize and think it through. Like I say, me, I, I, well, I was 19 when I started. How old were you when you started? I was, a, I was in my 30s. Okay, okay. Yeah. So you had a little bit more experience behind yeah. you. I, mm -hmm. I just jumped out the window, you know. <laughs> and sometimes when I look at and when I advise other entrepreneurs, some of the things that I tell them, save a certain amount of money and da 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 da, -da mm -hmm. it's a lot of the things that I didn't do. But when I look at the franchising model, I think it makes so much sense. I never had a salary. I had to build a salary. But when you buy a franchise, you have a built-in salary. You have a built-in staff. It has a built-in team. And I think that one of the things that stops a lot of new entrepreneurs and it held me back for many years is trying to do everything. But when you have a franchise, you run a system. You use your experience, your skills, the things that you learned in the military from your corporate experience, whatever, to run a system. Talk a little bit about that. So in running a system overall, I learned a lot uh, in the company that I formed under Wingstop, which is Top Wings Incorporated. And that was doing business as Wingstop. Being in that system for decades, a couple of decades, 22 years, as I mentioned, it taught me what a franchisor responsibilities are. Uh, so uh, sometimes we get it mixed up, you know, franchisee, franchisor, you know, as a franchisor, you own the brand, you own everything that's there. And once you create your franchise disclosure document, that's the requirement by the Federal Trade Commission that you have to have before you go into business. And you spoke about real estate earlier. Um, I'd been in real estate, you know, for, for some time. And I took my military savings out of my thrifty savings plan and started a real, a, uh, a real estate company, Titus Construction Real Estate Development, in my youngest son's namesake. Yeah. So I gave him the opportunity. I say, yeah. look, go to college, get your engineering degree, and you can walk right in to this business named after you, Titus, Titus Construction. Now so let's go back a little bit. <laughs> you, you mentioned the military. First off, how did you grow up? Where did you grow up? Were mm -hmm. you taught anything about money, entrepreneurship, wealth? What made you go to the military, and how has the military prepared you or do you think it prepared you for the entrepreneur world that you're now in? I know it's a lot of questions in one. No, well, uh, there, there's, there are a lot of things that the military provided for me. I grew up in Cleveland, Texas, about 50, mi 50 uh, miles north on uh, uh, Highway 69. 
and went to high school there. Um, I was one of the, the next to the last class to graduate from a segregated school. Okay. And in, in, in graduating, uh, as a boy, I would sell candies to my you know, classmates and, and, and students uh, that I went to school with to keep pocket money you know, in, my, in, in my pocket. And then I would sell the grit newspapers. And you know, as my mother owned restaurants and uh, was an entrepreneur, my grandfather. So I'm a third okay. generation um, restaurant owner, op, uh, you know, entre- uh, entrepreneur. So um, that is basically in my blood. Yeah. So, so what made you not go right into business? What made you make the choice to go into the military? The military was the best way for me to get my education. Okay. And going to the military allowed me to get that education. And um, I saw mom didn't have the money to pay for it. I knew I wanted that education, went to the military. I immediately uh, got those benefits and I served on active duty for three years. I came off of active duty and went to Prairie View where I'm a PV alum. Uh, So, um, and then Staying with the military was a key way to provide for my family, you know, not having that corporate job until later, uh, spending uh, 16 years at Hewlett Packard, starting at the shipping docks all the way up into management. So that allowed me to fund uh, Wingstop. It allowed me to have time to think about what uh, exit strategy I wanted to use after I got out of the military. Now, educationally, you have your bachelor's. I believe you have your MBA, Howard, right? Uh, executive MBA at Howard executive University. MBA at Howard. Where I produced my capstone presentation of waffles and creams, and I brought it to fruition from that capstone presentation in D.C. And I believe you're working on your doctorate now. Is that yeah, correct? I started that last month, and actually, it I, I'm in a headlock right now. Okay, <laughs> but uh, it's really giving me the business. But but uh, so where I was going with I'm, that, and I wanted I'm to proud ask, of that. Well, how important? It, obviously, there I believe is the Houston Art Institute mm-hmm. that just went out of business. Very from, mm. from from my understanding, they they are closing their campuses, and a lot of people invested a lot of money into their education, and now it's gone. And with a lot of these for profit uh, institutions or colleges or whatever, it, it's more about the money play, it, it, from my yeah, perspective, it than it is about the education. And at the end of the day, any college, any university, it's about that money, that revenue. Yeah. So my question is, how important do you think? education is and i'm talking formal education um to building wealth being a success in business well what an education it the education does a lot of things first of all it puts you in the room with your peers of folks who somewhat thinks like you have some of the similar experiences Um, it allows you to understand what the boardroom is requiring and what, you know, what they're expecting of an individual. Uh, So in doing my executive MBA, for example, that's a C-suite type of education. It prepares you for that C-suite, whether it's the CEO, COO, um, CFO, Chief Marketing Officer, CMO, So um, that education uh, uh, allows you to acquire that credibility, if you will. So when you speak as a uh, graduate of Howard University, actually ranked second under Spelman uh, right now, if you look at the US US News today. Uh, So so I think that credibility comes comes into play there. So. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna jump ahead and correct me if I'm wrong. Now you were military, so the military funded your education, correct? They they funded up to a 
MBA. So okay. I found out that I have to pay for okay. this doctorate degree so from Prairie View. Where I'm going with that is, if you didn't have the military background and and you had to invest your own funds into the education, do you think you would have made the same decision? So is the is the benefit and the ROI from that education? Um, is it something that was worth it? Would you yes. have spent your own resources I, on it? I would say yes, and here's why. The At the time, being a chief warrant officer four, looking to get promoted to the highest rank as a chief warrant officer five, okay. I wanted to be ahead of my peers in having that master's in business administration. That's on the military side. That's one. Secondly, having as many years of experience as I have in franchising uh, as a franchisee and a franchisor, it would help me on that side to uh, help build my business and understand those critical thinking exercises and, 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 and uh, uh, things that I have to go through in decision making, you know, uh, as you know, we bring in millions of dollars every year from the three stores that we have and soon to be even more, I, I, I anticipate within my real estate holdings. So, you know, that's twofold. The education helped me on the army military side and in my civilian business. And it's a, uh, it's, it's a plus for to, to, to build my character as well. Yeah. Me, my experience, I often tell people, and I, I, I say that it wasn't that I didn't have the guidance that I think I've given my children. Um, growing up, my kid, my parents told me, you're going to college. They didn't tell me really why. They didn't really hmm. tell me what to study. Uh, I tell my kids, I want you to go to college, but understand that college is an investment and you are looking for a return on that investment. Mm -hmm. So look at the majors that you're going into and ask yourself, what am I going to do with it? So that being said, I don't feel as though I got much out of the classroom from my college education. I got a lot outside the classroom, my network, my board of directors, a lot of my contacts. I went to the University of Texas at Austin. It's helped me tremendously. Mm -hmm. So I do think it was worth the investment, but I feel like I could have increased that ROI had I studied something other than just a boilerplate communications major just so I could have this paper and my parents could say, look, my son graduated from the University of Texas. Well, well, I believe it's much more than that because when you're in a university, structured educational facility of sorts, you it, it allows you to touch a lot of different areas. Yeah. Those same areas that you'll have to touch in business to ensure that you're yeah. You know, you, you, you know where you are, you're, 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 you're at a, a viable place to sustain the business. So being exposed to that in college, in theory, allows you to marry that up uh, with the experiences on the outside. So uh, okay. it's a plus. So we, we're, we're running short on time, and I certainly don't want to negate your capstone presentation, Waffles and Cream. Talk a little bit about the difference between being a franchisee and a franchisor, and talk a little bit about your concept. And for those budding entrepreneurs, those that want to come into the franchise business, where can they get some information um, uh, on your franchise? Let's talk a little bit about that. Thank you wafflesandcreams.com waffles with a z go to our franchising opportunity site and go out there today and fill out your information and send it to us that concept was instrumental i believe that you know in in formulating that at at the howard before i actually stood before a panel to uh tell them about the concept uh that you know, I wanted something that kind of encompasses, you know, quite a few things. We got, you know, our smoothies, 
We have our iced coffees. We have ice cream. We have waffles. Our waffles are made different from other waffles to where we put fresh fruit inside the waffle and we garnish the waffle on the outside with fruit as well. We have our spicy fried chicken that has a brine that is seasoned to, you know, to the taste, it's spicy. And, you know, it's, it's, it's just delicious all the way around. So um, I was in Toronto a couple of weeks ago, and I have a lot of prospective individuals who are, who are looking at uh, populating the Toronto area. That's just the uh, uh, one aspect of, uh, of Canada. I was in Chicago, and I'm looking to go to Tampa here shortly uh, to do the same thing. And, um, you know, I'm looking for brand partners who are not afraid to get their, you know, roller sleeves up and get at it. I think it's a great concept. It's at a level to where, you know, most, uh, you know, entrepreneurs can, you know, come in. There's a two store minimum. And this is an opportunity. It's an opportunity get in on the ground and, level, and ground like. level. And then uh, you want to expand. So franchisee. You're kind of, you know, what following the leader and, and then, you know, allowing them to kind of tell you what to do and, and so on and so forth in a structure. As a franchisor, your rut sack, you know, pardon the pun, is, is a little heavier because you're responsible for, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars of, of, of investments that people have put into your into your business. So. Um, we've been trained along the ways in those uh, 22 years to where we know what a franchisor does. We know what it looks like. And we became a franchisor uh, not long ago. Well, I, I personally believe in franchising. That's why Texas Black Expo is launching the Entrepreneurship Through Acquisition Academy. Mm -hmm. And we're targeting individuals with a corporate background. Many people are running businesses for other people. Right. So they are in a position that I wasn't in when I started in business. They have the resources, they have the assets, and they have the knowledge, they have the network because they mm -hmm. have this experience. So why not run your own business? Yeah. And instead of starting a business and figuring out how you're going to pay yourself, buy right. a business where there's a salary that's built in yep. where you can grow that salary, yep. grow the net worth and the equity of the organization mm -hmm. and then have an asset that you can sell. So I'm I'm all in. Multi-unit uh, operator. I'm certainly not upset with the path that I've gone down, but when I think back, I kind of wish that I would have uh, uh, strongly considered the franchising It's route. not too late, Jerome. Well, you know, <laughs> I think most people, when they think of franchising, you think McDonald's, you think Burger King, and you think, oh, millions of dollars. But I went to, they had a franchise expo in Chicago probably about eight, nine years ago. Mm -hmm. And the surprising thing, I didn't see McDonald's, I didn't see Burger King. It was all these remediation company, insurance companies, some yeah. as low as $5,000. There were some in the 150, yeah. 200, but they were some really $10,000, $15,000 prices. And it just really surprised me. So yeah. now I know we're running short on time. So I want to ask you this. 18, I'm 18 years old. I'm James Davis. I want to start in business. What advice would you give that 18 year old, 20 year old James Davis, whole world in front of him, thinking about starting in business? What is the thing you would share to yourself? What is that one thing that you wish you would have known then that you know now? What would you say? That's easy, Jerome. Put yourself in a position to buy a house. Do all the things that it takes to buy a house. If you can afford a house, that means you have the job or the income to support a house. That means uh, you have the credit that is needed to ensure that uh, you can purchase the house. And basically that ability to buy a house puts you in a very, very, uh, probably a 90% uh, pos possibility that you can get into a business, especially a franchise. And I would choose a franchise because it provides you all the help, all those tangible things that you need to have and know going in. So um, if you're able to buy a house, you can buy into a franchise. If your, grand if your parents 
or your grandparents have a 401k that you could utilize. You could leverage that 401k money and move into buying a business as well. So um, just put yourself in position to buy a house. And, you know, if, if you're 18 and you can buy a house, you know, most 18 year olds, you know, they're just starting their career. But you have to prepare yourself in that manner to uh, I mean, houses, are, houses prices are going up, but uh, just. Put no, I, in I think that's really good advice. I, I tell you, it was surprising. I didn't expect you to give that, yeah. but that makes sense. When I look at my life, I bought my first house when I was 21, right after there I got go. from college. And I, it was through my pastor. Like I always thought, um, you know, when, when I get to be 30, when I get married and I get a kid, I'm going mm-hmm. to buy a house. And my pastor said something from the pulpit. He said, everybody talks about they want to be rich. I'm going to give you a freebie. Stop renting and start to own. There you go. And I just, I never thought about buying a house. I was 20, 21 years old. I had 700 credit scores, 800. I had really had no credit, Hmm. Uh, but I went in and they, they qualified me for a house. Yeah. And I bought a condo in Austin, Texas, two bedroom, one bath for $71,000 that I sold a year later for (laughs) $95,000. And at that point, $20,000 in my pocket, I thought I was rich. Yep. I used that, bought a duplex and a house on the north side. There you go. Now you're talking. The duplex I sold a year after that. I bought it for 135. I sold it for 168. Yep. So that was now, I want to tell the full story. I took that and then bought a fourplex in Killeen. And then when that Iraq war hit, the whole population of the city left. Now I'm upside down. And that one, that that was a horror story there, but we'll talk about that in another one. But bottom line is I learned so much Mm -hmm. through that. So they're giving me the sign. James, thank you so much for joining (laughs) us here on the Black Money Tree (laughs) Podcast. Do you want to share anything with the folk out there, how we can find you, social media? Give us that franchise information again so we can go ahead and wrap this up. Waffles with a Z. And it's waffles, the letter N, creams with a Z, dot com. Uh, go to our website. We have two locations in the Houston Metroplex, and we're looking to put one near you very soon. Um, so we're franchising. Great opportunity. Great way to get in on the ground floor. We're waiting to see you. Thank you. And until next time, make sure you go to BeARealEstateInvestor.com if you're interested in learning more about uh, real estate investing. And we want to see you at the, at the Texas Black Expo next year, May 17th through the 19th. We need your support. So we're doing a lot of work in the community. Our goal is to help to build wealth so that you can build your community. Until next time, thank you for joining us on the Black Money Tree Podcast. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Black Money Tree Podcast. Don't forget to like and share this video. And if you want more content like this, follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. We'll see you next time.